Welcome back to this, the fourth in my series of modifying and restoring this old mini lathe. Uh, in this episode we're going to be looking at the headstock. There are a number of modifications that have already been done to it. The first is that this one was delivered with, on with only three headstock holes, the headstock mounting bolts. Here's the mini lathe bed set up on the mahu. I'll be using it to drill that fourth uh, mounting hole for the headstock. So first spot drilling it. And now counter sinking. For a single hole I don't bother with using any Programming, I just do it like a manual manual mill. Here I'm just finishing off a transfer punch which will be hardened and then used to uh, find the center for drilling out the extra um, threaded hole in the in the headstock. Right, let's harden that uh, transfer punch. It's made out of silver steel. I dunked it in some green stuff I got off eBay, which is supposed to cut down the oxidization. And I'm not sure if I've got enough gas in this gas bottle. But the main thing is we're making flames and it seems everyone in YouTube loves flames. Huh? Okay, that's starting to look good. Looks like it should be hard. Right now we'll just heat it up to a straw colour and quench it again to temper it a little. I'm heating from the bottom because it's the top. I oh, yeah, the top's already gone. Now let's punch the See the hole. Yep, that worked. And finally tapping. Cast iron sure is nice to tap. There we go. And another job done. The bearings and other headstock components, belts, tooth belts, uh, tooth pulleys, etc., I ordered from. Uh, Agro Lager in Germany. So what do we got here? We have a pair of tooth pulleys and their associated tooth belt. Those are going to be used to drive this encoder, which we'll get back to later. I got a, a pair of new 6, uh, 6001 bearings for the input shaft. These are the tapered roller bearings for the main spindle. And this is the new PJ uh, drive belt for the main drive. The second modification you see in here is this was originally delivered with plastic gears, which I of course broke, and they've been replaced by a set of steel gears from Armour Deal in the UK. I'll put a link in the comments section. Here I'm just making up a lapping ring to uh, reduce the diameter of the, of the lathe's uh, shaft because it's a bit, a bit too big for the bearings.
these are just the holes to relieve the relieve the strain a bit, make it easier to uh, change the diameter. Always put in the back gear, lock the spindle, and chuck comes off. I can now finish off the, the lap. This is the finished lapping ring. Just uses a hose clamp to reduce the diameter. Because I'm running this as a CNC machine with a completely different drive system, all of the drive components are being replaced. Uh, so this you'll see a bit later. But the first job that really needs to, to, to be done before I move on is to fit the headstock to the bed. Now I've done a little bit of scraping on this before. Basically the fit was just as horrible as all of the other fits on this machine. I really need to scrape in the fit between the, the head's way interface and the, ways, the bed ways. To do that I'm going to need another tool. To make sure I scrape the head casting so that the spindle is straight down the bed, both horizontally and vertically, I'm going to need a, t a test bar which interfaces with the number three morse of the spindle. So the first tool I need to make here is that test bar. I'm going to make the test bar out of this piece of stainless. Uh, this was a piece of aircraft grade stainless I fished out of the rubbish bin back when I worked in the airlines nearly 30 years ago. It's been follow following me around ever since. Um, what I'll be doing, first cleaning up the two, the two ends and putting in centres, and then I'll turn it between centres and put a Morse taper on it, and then turn the test bar portion in the, also between centres and lap it to try and get a nice straight and... Um, accurate diameter and keep it on the same center as the as the Morse taper. To turn this Morse taper I'm going to need to reverse my top slide. So next up I'm just going to check to see whether the centers drilled in the ends of that uh, shank run through to the taper. And they don't. There's about one and a half thou of total indicated runout. Let's try the other end. Okay, that end's better. It only has about six ten thousandth of total indicated runout. I can't change anything about this. I don't have another shank to use instead. I'll just use, I'll just dial in the taper and cut it like this and then check the final taper by gluing it up and inserting it into the mini laid spindle and maybe do a fine adjustment to the to the taper if necessary. The only drive dog I've got is too small. So that brings us to an addition of making tools to make tools to do the job.
here we are in Slicer. First thing we do is add that document we just created, that stereo lithography file of the lathe dog. Looks like that. Uh, there's nothing we need to change with the alignment or anything. Um, I've got the printer set up to do 0.2 millimeter layer height. Uh, we're not going to need any support material for this. So, so all we need to do is hit the export g-code up here and once that file has been created we can transfer it to the printer and start printing. My 3D printer is powered by Duet Wi-Fi therefore to upload files you just use this um, this web browser interface and go in and upload your files. The lathe dog g-code once the printer's cooled back down and I remove the last print job, I can start printing it. A friend of mine cut a new piece of glass for the uh, bed of this uh, 3D printer. Don't know what it is about this specific piece of glass, but it sticks far better than any other I've ever used. Uh, you have to wait till it's completely cold before you get a decent removal. There's the lathe dog we're going to use to, to, uh, to drive our bar on the lathe. That's going to be a perfect fit.